Thank you very much. Uh, can I welcome everyone to the 29th meeting of the Justice Committee in 2015. I ask everyone to switch off mobile phones and other electronic devices and interfere with broadcasting, even when they're switched to silent. No apologies have been received. I'm inviting the committee to agree to consider item 7, an issues paper on the Community Justice Scotland Bill, and item 8, our approach to scrutiny of the abuse and behaviour and sexual harm Scotland Bill, and item 9, our work programme in private. Are you agreed? agreed. The next item is consideration one affirmative instrument, the draft Criminal Justice and Licence in Scotland Act 2010, Supplementary Provision Order 2015. I welcome Michael Matheson, Cabinet Secretary for Justice and Government Officials, Philip Lamont, Criminal Justice Division, you're still here, and Laura Mitchell, Legal Services Director. Can I remind everyone that the officials can take part in this item, obviously with leave of the Cabinet Secretary, but not in the formal debate that follows, and that the same applies when we come to consider the next affirmative instrument today. This is an evidence session. Cabinet Secretary, you wish to make an opening statement? Kevin, if I could make a, a very brief uh, opening statement. Committee members will be aware that the Scottish Sensing Council was officially established just a few days ago on Monday the 19th of October. It's planning for the, um, planning for the commencement of the relevant provisions in the Criminal Justice and Licensing Scotland Act 2010. It was noted that there was no explicit provision within that Act to authorise payment of fees and expenses to members of the Council. Earlier this year, members will recall that secondary legislation was brought forward under the Judiciary and Court Scotland Act 2008 to enable the Scottish Court and Tribunal Service to provide administrative support to the Council. It has been agreed with the Scottish Court and Tribunal Service that payment of fees and expenses should also be made by them, giving them administrative support functions, giving their administrative support functions to the Council. The Financial Memorandum in the 2010 Act envisaged such a role for the Scottish Court and Tribunal Service in assisting the operation of the Council. And this order, made under the auxiliary powers in the 2010 Act, will put beyond doubt the ability of the Scottish Court and Tribunal Service to pay fees and expenses to members of the Council. Express authority to pay expenses to members of the Council will help give full effect to the operation of the Council. And I'm, of course, happy to answer any questions the committee Thank you very have. much. Questions? There are no questions. Oh, I beg your pardon. Who's got their hand up? Alison, thank you. Alison. <laughs> thank you. Um, coming to Secretary, I just wondered if you shared my disappointment at the lack of gender balance on the new sentencing council. Well, the uh, constitution of it is um, uh, through the appointment of part by the Scottish Government and part by uh, the Lord Justice General, the Lord Justice Clark, in his absence at the present uh, moment. Um, of the uh, members who, which we have the powers to appoint to it, um, uh, nearly 40 per cent are uh, female, uh, sorry, over 66 per cent of them are female, so uh, uh, from the Scottish Government's nominees. Uh, and uh, uh, Lord Justice Clark has decided to appoint the individuals that they see as being appropriate. I know this is an issue which the committee's engaged with the, mm -hmm. uh, Lord Justice Clark on uh, previously, and uh, uh, overall uh, it's about uh, 40 a uh, uh, percent to our female, uh, but we have appointed individuals that we see as being the most appropriate individuals to represent the Scottish Government on the Sentencing Council. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Well, it wasn't really about that, but it doesn't matter. Uh, can I then? Um, I take. I can now um, move straight to item three, the formal debate, and invite the Cabinet Secretary to move motion S4M 14395 that the Justice Committee recommends the Draft Criminal Justice and Licence Scotland Act 2010 Supplementary Provision Order 2015 be approved. Mo moved. I take it no members wish to speak on the motion and I don't think Cabinet Secretary have anything to respond to. So the question is that motion S4M 14395 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Um, I now think move on to item four which is the, um, I think we've got other officials coming in, have we? I'll not suspend, I'll just waffle for a bit. <laughs> That's what politicians can do. Many of us are paid to waffle. I can't waffle much longer. Right, don't say you can, that's not fair. I now move on to a further affirmative instrument, the Draft International Organisations Immuni Immun Immunities and Privileges Scotland Amendment Order 2015. Cabinet Secretary of Europe goes, and I welcome the officials, Nicola Wishdall. Is it Wishdall? 
Wisdell. Wisdell, sorry. Uh, Civil Law and Legal Systems Division and Alistair Smith Legal Services Division. And uh, can I go straight to questions from members? Cabinet Secretary is not making an opening statement. Elaine, and then uh, I've got... Um, um, wondered what Roger, you know, Roderick, I've forgotten his name. Yes, yeah. I mean, <laughs> drugs are kicking in. <laughs> I just wondered. I mean, I suppose there's always something when you see banks and legal privileges and immunities that wee bit sort of raises your eyebrows a bit. And I just wondered if you could say a little bit more about what sort of legal pri pri privileges and immunities would be uh, conferred on this particular bank. I, I'll ask yet another question. If there, there's anybody else with questions apart from Lena and Rod Roderick? Yeah, I just. Uh, interested, perhaps no more than that, as to whether there are other, any other banks apart from the Asian Infra Infrastructure Investment Bank who I know absolutely nothing about, which is the clarity of why this particular organisation, if it is the only one, is kind of marked out. At Cabinet Secretary, two questions. OK. Um, uh, this follows an international agreement which was entered into by the UK Government, uh, and uh, part of that agreement is the uh, immunity for prosecution uh, for this particular bank uh, in its operations within the UK. And part of the UK agreement uh, to this is that it needs to, be, uh, needs to have immunity from prosecution across the whole of the UK. So the devolved competence around uh, uh, being uh, immune from uh, prosecution falls to the Scottish Government and the similar orders to implement similar provisions are presently before uh, the UK Parliament. In effect, it provides it with diplomatic immunity um, uh, uh, and uh, the provisions which uh, are provided uh, under diplomatic immunity uh, and uh, the immunity from prosecution falls to us uh, and that's the purpose behind this particular uh, order. Um, there is a significant amount of background as to why the UK government are seeking to have this uh, bank based within the UK. Uh, my understanding is that the purpose of this bank is for it to raise money within uh, the UK and Europe for investment in Asia. Uh, its purpose and they want it, uh, and part of the attraction they want to provide to it being based within the UK is having uh, immunity from prosecution and the diplomatic immunity provisions uh, which they uh, receive. Um, I'm not aware if there are any other banks uh, which have uh, immunity from prosecution, uh, but there are a whole range of different organisations that have immunity from prosecution uh, 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 for a whole variety of uh, reasons, uh, through, largely through international treaties uh, and, uh, uh, and the requirement for uh, 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 governments to implement those provisions within their own domestic law. And then something about the... Has your question been answered as well? Thank you. Um, well, no, for any other banks, so I was just seeking... Right, was, Michael was looking at the official. Sorry. So, I'd repeat your question, just... Cabinet Secretary, you looked at your official to see whether, that the question whether there were any other banks apart from this one. Uh, there is none detailed within the actual... Um, uh, the, uh, the order details itself, but we can check and respond to the committee in that matter as well. Thank you. Alison, followed by John Finney, please. What assurances can you give us that Scottish citizens who invest in this bank are given the same safeguards as anybody banking with another bank? Uh, this, this is not a commercial high street it's bank not. operation. This is an investment bank okay. which is operating for infrastructure investment. So it's not a sort of bank that's operating on a retail basis. So it's not a, another high street bank that's seeking to operate in the UK. This is a, 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 effectively a, a, an infrastructure investment organisation. Uh, uh, which is going to be operating uh, on a global basis and the UK government's desire to have it based within the UK. And if it's not individuals, would it be um, obviously companies or pension funds that might invest oh, in it? Going with us like <laughs> No, I'm, I'm concerned. I don't know enough about it. I'm concerned to understand. Well, there, there, is, there is supplementary information which has been provided by the UK government in this matter. Our responsibility is the issue about helping to support the international agreement that they have reached around providing immunity from prosecution in Scotland. Um, uh, but my, uh, the nature of their uh, business, I understand, is raising investment in the UK with a view to investing in Asia in infrastructure projects. The concept behind it is that, uh, I understand, is that it's to help to support the Asian economy. And in helping to support the Asian economy, there is a benefit both to the UK and the European economy as a result. So my understanding is that, um, as I say, from what I've heard, is that it's about raising capital investment within the UK that can then be invested within the Asian economy. 
I thought it was going the other way, actually, unless I've been misreading the newspapers. It was Asian capitals we invested in our economy, but there we are. But anyway, we, we appreciate it's not your money that's involved in this, Alison. You're not an international investor, as far as we know. John Finney, please. Okay. Thank you. Some details back to Rod Campbell's point here. There are other First banks. Yes, then John's yes question. about banks that have the, the European Bank for Reconstruction Development, uh, the Asian Development Bank, the Inter America uh, Development Bank, the Caribbean Development Bank um, have all uh, been given uh, privileges and immunities across the whole of the UK, which includes within uh, Scotland from prosecution. John. Thank you. Morning, Cabinet Secretary. Cabinet Secretary, are you able to say if these immunities are to the corporation, the institution, or to individuals? It will be on the basis that they will be granted immunity from prosecution as an organisation. And I presume that the individual immunities for individuals will be to do with diplomatic immunity, uh, which would be afforded by the UK government. But this is immunity for the organisation to be uh, immune from prosecution under Scots law. I might. Um, it, does, um, it does include um, immunities for individuals in their, in their official capacity um, in very much the same way as, um, as other listed bodies. Um, the effect of this order is to add a further schedule into um, <coughs> the international organisations Immunities and Privileges Scotland Order 2009. This has 15 um, schedules dealing with various bodies and this will be, this will be schedule 16 um, and uh, um, it's in very similar terms to um, um, the, other, um, uh, the other immunities uh, does extend to representatives in their, uh, um, in their official capacity. So can I ask about the practical application of that then? Does that mean that if individuals or the organisation commit the crime of fraud in Scotland, they won't be prosecuted? It would afford them the same uh, uh, privileges uh, for a, a diplomat in that they are immune from prosecution in undertaking their roles. Is that a yes, Cabinet Secretary? Though? In effect. Yeah. So, similarly, money laundering? Uh, well, uh, uh, th that's much more complex uh, in itself, but it's, uh, effectively it makes them immune from prosecution. But keep in mind the purpose of this particular bank that the UK government are seeking to provide these powers to. If, if I might add, the, um, the instrument does provide um, that the um, immunities may be waived by the bank. Um, so, um, if, an individual, um, if an individual were to be... Um, um, so, yeah. acting, um, yes. acting outside of the, um, um, the intended um, role, uh, perhaps fraudulently, then the bank would be able to waive the, um, uh, waive the privilege. So defrauding their own bank in Scotland maybe wouldn't be subject to diplomatic immunity. C can I uh, ask, uh, the, and I read this for the first time coming down... That? I think that would, you've said defrauding their own bank. Uh, would you like to answer that? I take it that would be covered by what you've just said. Uh, well, part of the provision is that a person connected with the bank shall enjoy immunity from suit or uh, legal process in respect of things done or omitted uh, to be done in the course of the performance of the person's official duties for the bank, uh, exempt to the extent that the bank shall have expressed, expressly waived uh, such immunity. Uh, so if someone is acting obviously out with what they should be doing for the bank, then they effectively no longer have that immunity. Pretty much like the UK banking industry has been was doing systematically over a number of years prior to the what? recent crisis. I'm, I'm trying to understand, uh, Cabinet Secretary, and I read this for the first time coming down the train with uh, some uh, astonishment. This relates to uh, a piece of legislation that starts in 1968, and the UK government had made a request to the Scottish government to enact this legislation as regards crimes or offences which would take place in Scotland. That's correct? Yes, yes they are, of course. Yeah. Is this the new politics that this building was supposed to be about? Because it doesn't sound like it to me. It sounds like more of the same. Of? Um, a situation where uh, we would allow crimes to take place um, under the uh, protection that this is financial institutions. It defrauding or committing some sort of offence? Well, there's a range of offences that banks have committed, yeah. Well, I think well, part crime, of... Of course, fraud's a crime. It's a very serious matter to defraud. Yeah, part, part of this protection is in the course of them undertaking their duties. Uh, yeah. Obviously, if they're out with that role, then they aren't afforded the same protection. 
Yeah, well, it's, it's more of the same, and I certainly wouldn't be supporting it anyway. Thank you. Can I just have an explanation? I know we're kind of digging in here, but it says, how far is this within the... I mean, banking, as I understand it, is reserved. So how, how far is this to comply with the UK's role in this? I mean, how much flexibility does a devolved government have in this? I know, don't know, because it says a related order subject by the UK Parliament as it relates to reserved matters. I thought banking and all this was all, you know, reserved. So is this yeah. simply to... So the UK government have entered into an international agreement uh, uh, with regards to this bank... And part of the condition of that international okay. agreement is that these provisions apply across the whole of the UK. Right. So, is this necessary just to bring Scotland into line? Let's put it in ordinary parlance. For the purposes of the UK government to be able to deliver on the international agreement which they've entered into. Convener, can I... Uh, no, I'm just, I just wanted to explain. I've got some other people. I'll have Elaine and Margaret, then I'll bring you back in. Elaine. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still sort of uncomfortable about this. I mean, I, I totally appreciate this is not uh, of the Scottish government's making. This is, a, you know, the devolved competence of something that the UK government's trying to do. But I, I fail to, to understand what a bank would be doing that would be breaking the law in Scotland, but that somehow they should be allowed to get away with it because they've got diplomatic immunity. I mean, say that was part of their duties as somebody who works for the bank, but they were actually... Uh, uh, breaking the law of, of, in our country, I mean, why, why should they have immunity for well, be, For the same reasons that they've probably given uh, diplomatic immunity uh, from prosecution to the other banks that previously no. have been development banks, and this is effective on our development bank for infrastructural investment. But for the, in order for the UK government, in order to deliver on its international agreement, it has to achieve that immunity from prosecution across yes. the whole of the UK in all jurisdictions. Doesn't it strike you that this is partly what's wrong with the, bank, the banking sector internationally, that they can get away with breaking the law and have these sorts of agreements to enable them to break the law in different countries and the country that they break the law in can't do I, think, I think we're into a much bigger debate there in terms of the operations of banks and the way in which they've been operating across the, uh, across the UK and across the globe um, in itself, uh, which is, it goes much wider than just this issue in itself. Margaret. I wonder, um, Cabinet Secretary, if there's um, another way to look at this, and I'm not sure there is, because I understand the concerns that are being raised, and in fact, you know, I have the, the same myself, but by giving diplomatic immunity, is there um, more of a positive case for ensuring information that may be of a very sensitive nature, that may be connected to organised crime, that may be even have um, more... Um, more sinister links to, to terrorism to make sure that all this information is, is held and, and, and forthcoming as soon as possible. Is there anything to do with that within this, this, these provisions? Um, I'm not entirely sure it is linked to that, uh, yeah. to be honest with you, um, uh, because there are many organisations that are uh, responsible for looking at and dealing with these issues that don't have diplomatic immunity mm. uh, in these issues. Um, so, for example, Police Scotland deal with these matters in Scotland, but they don't have diplomatic immunity. Uh, so, um, uh, no, this is part of an international agreement that's been reached. Um, and uh, part of the condition within that is the development bank, well, the infrastructure bank, as it's described, has uh, been given immunity from prosecution, in effect, diplomatic immunity um, uh, uh, across the whole of the jurisdiction in the UK. Roddy. Uh, thank you, Convener. Um, Christian, then, Roddy. <laughs> no, you're, 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 on an you're on an additional piece of paper, that's why. There you go, uh, Good morning. Uh, what would be the consequences of this committee voting down this instrument? Uh, well, this is my understanding. Is this, an, uh, this is a, a condition of the international agreement. If uh, the UK government aren't able to deliver an international agreement, I suspect that they will not be able to, uh, to follow that through. And what would happen next? What would you, you do next? What will we do? Well, yeah. it's not our agreement, it's the UK government's agreement. So um, they will obviously have to revisit the issue. And uh, what the consequences of that will be is a matter for the UK government, given its okay. agreement they've entered into. Thank you. And uh, now, Roderick. Thank you, convener. Um, John? A couple of points. I'm, I'm not sure whether you'll be able to answer this question in terms of who, who it is within the jurisdiction of Scotland is actually providing or likely to be providing kind of the investment for the bank's use. 
um, we're not talking about, I assume, Joe Public. We're talking about presumably some specialist financial institutions in the first place. Um, and in relation to the, the other institutions that were referred to, um, presumably, have they been the subject of affirmative instruments in this parliament? I don't know if anybody can add, or, or, or why is this, this bank institution, why is this affirmative instrument coming up now? Um, Roddy, yeah, but, uh, uh, yeah. like, I think they have been. Yeah. Uh, uh, what I should say, just come back to the point about the, um, if, the, uh, if this committee wasn't to approve this particular order, as my understanding, there are other routes which the UK government could pursue in order to achieve their objective. Which are? Cabinet Secretary, are you able to answer, provide any more information about where this funding for the investment bank is being provided for in Scotland then? Do you have any information? I'm afraid not, because that's a matter for the UK government. Right. Uh, John. Yeah, uh, Cabinet Secretary, th th this is the Parliament's Justice Committee. You're here as Cabinet Secretary for Justice, and people would anticipate maybe that you would have a clearer understanding of, of the relationship between these international laws and what you are effectively asking this uh, committee to lend their support to, and that is... Uh, uh, turning a blind eye to crime that may take place. Uh, you, you've used the term diplomatic frequently. It's uh, strong, John. I mean, you know, the possibility of things, but not well, turning it a blind eye. Place, okay. Should it take place to disregard it, then? OK, that's better. Let's just... Uh, yeah, yeah. OK, Hello, off within, you go. The, within the confines of It's this, dramatic but, stuff. Let's use it like that. Go for right. it. Um, Cabinet Secretary, you've used the term diplomatic. Which countries are involved with this? Uh, all in. Every uh, country in Asia? Uh, within European, for the European Investment Bank. Well, no, sorry, for the, the, for the, Asian, for the Asian Infrastructure, Invest, Infrastructure Bank. Uh, I'm not entirely sure of all... Well, actually, we have. Um, there's a number of regional members uh, which are part of it that go from Australia uh, through to Cambodia, China, Indonesia, uh, Israel, Jordan. Um, uh, there's a list of them here in New Zealand, Pakistan. Uh, that are all... Uh, within it, there is the uh, Singapore, uh, Sri Lanka, Thailand, uh, Vietnam. There's also non-regional members, uh, which are from Austria, Brazil, Denmark, Egypt, Finland, France, Germany, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, Malta, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, South Africa, uh, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland, and then the UK. All right. Okay. Um, and. Has, has any impact, I know that no um, BRIA has been done in respect of this, but has there been any impact assessment on the likelihood of this uh, immunity being called upon? Impact assessment by the UK Government? Not I'm aware well, no, of. No, uh, no, by the Cabinet Secretary for Justice. No, there has been no impact assessment on it being undertaken. None at all? No, OK. Um, you could have come here and... Um, called for us to oppose this measure. A minute, John. I'm, I, I think that the, the, I, I'm agree. I see the committee is not con, not too satisfied with things at the moment. I'm just wondering if there's a, a process way where we can get further information. And I appreciate that we've got to report by Parliament by the 2nd of November. But I wonder if there's a way where we can, can raise all these further issues with you in some detail. And, and then the committee can consider what its views are on it. I mean, well, there's ramifications for this journal across the way that we maybe are unaware of. I'm not aware of them, but, you know, if there's international treaties and God knows what's happening. Is there a way that we could possibly deal with it? I see, we, must we report by the 2nd of November? Uh, well, first of all, yes, there is a way in which we can provide you with more information, part of which is if you want to put those points to us, we can also pursue some of those <coughs> details with the UK government who have entered into the international like uh, uh, agreement as well, and to provide you with more substance around some of those issues, given that they have got the lead responsibility uh, in this area. In terms of the actual time frame, whether that uh, it alters things that we would have to check and respond to in that matter as well. Uh, well, given that the, there's already parallel orders being taken forward in the yeah. UK Parliament at the present time? Well, I, 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 with the leave of the committee, I suggest that we, with the leave of the committee, we leave this just now. We come back to it later today, which is a continuation, which is a... You're looking at me. Pardon? Margaret? It's OK. I think yeah, that's a we come back to this later today when your office can provide us with information whether or not we could either consider... The preferable thing would be to consider this next week, 
with further information so we can all these issues that have yeah. been raised can be considered by the committee and all the ramifications, the whole thing, in much more detail. Um, and if not, we will have to take a view on whether or not we then uh, move it and have you back to move it uh, later in the agenda. We're going to private session later on, but at some point you come back and move it if the committee decides that. Or indeed, if we could uh, take this further in the later stage of the week, which is not really satisfactory to others. So my preference, frankly, would be if we could deal with this next week, if we're not under some kind of, you know, um, sort of Damocles to get this done by Second Tuesday and report. Because we can't, my view is we can't report in the morning and ask Parliament the same day. So we couldn't do it all on the Tuesday next week. It would have to be there is a time the frame. Week. There is a time frame for it to go to the Privy Council, which, which I believe is at the beginning of December. Well, therefore, it looks. If I, if if you if the committee is agreed, then I would suggest that having this is the evidence session in part concluded, in part, that if possible we return to this cabinet secretary next week, when we can hear further evidence, either in written form or oral, if you're able to come back, and well, you'd have to come back to move or not move, um, move the, um, the. Um, Instrument. How does the committee feel about that? Because a lot of things have been raised that we need to, rather than take a hasty view. John? Could, could the Cabinet Secretary provide clarification about his comment that there might be another route by which... That's the exactly that fine. That's because the kind of thing... a constitutional matter... No, that that's the kind happen. of thing I'm happy to explore, because there was a lot opened up, and we haven't really got the time or the detail to come to a conclusion. Is that content? Of course. Right. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. So um, that ends the, this evidence session, and I'll get a note back about next week, ASAP, from um, your office, hopefully. Thank you very much. I then move on to um, item five. Yes. Items. Wait a wee minute. I'm lost. No item five. Item five. No, that's gone because we're not moving that. We're going on to item six because we're not doing the debate. And that, uh, everybody knows where they are except me. Well, that's nothing new. Item six. <coughs> Three negative instruments. The first is the discontinuance of legalised police cells, Scotland Rules 2015. It formally discontinues the legalised police cells in Danoon, Oban, Lochmaddy, Campbelltown and Thursday, which in effect means they can no longer be used as legal prisons for the detention of prisoners before, during and after trial. The DPLR... Uh, the committee did not report any concern on this instrument. We can have comments on this instrument from members if you have any comments. Can I just ask if the prisoners do go if they're not using these <laughs> facilities <laughs> and if they're closed, you know, what provision is made? Should they need to use? Well, I can write for further explanation, but I can't answer it, obviously, so I'm not the government. So, mm -hmm. But I can write that as a question on the record, which will continue. Mm -hmm. This um, regulation at the Inspector of Prisons recommended this some time ago, so it's good to see it. Welcome, it, but we're going to find out what happens in practical terms. Thank you. Could, could I just do it through the chair, please, instead of a general little cold I, debate? I, 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 well, I mean, the, the evidence that we've got is that here is it's not used, and the idea that you're going to keep something and maybe it will be used. We would keep every motor on the road forever, wouldn't we? Does, <laughs> we're does, back you know, to cars, Gil. I yeah, wonder what your connection it, is. It always comes back to cars. I mean, it's just... <laughs> if, it, if it's not been used... It, it, yeah, we can, there's no harm in finding out where they go anyway, OK? So I take it you've no, you're content to make no recommendation in relation to this instrument. Um, uh, so, sorry, who is going to go where if they are not used? That's exactly... <laughs> <laughs> I feel somebody's put something in the water today. No. Now, let's just rewind. <laughs> to keep Margaret sweet, I'm going to find out where they go pro tem, OK? That's all. Now, can we just move on and say, do you have any recommendation and no recommendation relation to this instrument? No. Are you with me? Thank you, Alison. I have hope, yes. looking at you. <laughs> the second negative instrument for our consideration is the Police Pension Scheme Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015. And Sorry, could I at this point, and I should have earlier, I, I was unable to open this particular link. I think it's unlikely it will relate to me, but I should declare an interest in possibly as a, a recipient of a police pension. Yes. Let's hope they put their funds in the right place then. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> the, anyway, uh, having stated that, the purpose of this instrument is to amend the Police Pension Scheme Scotland Regulations 2015 to correct errors and omissions in that instrument. Again, the DPLR committee has no concerns in the instrument. Do members have any comments in relation to this instrument? Do you have any comments? No. 
So you are content to make no recommendation in relation to this instrument? Content. Thank content. you. Yes. The third and final negative instrument consideration is the Legal and Miscellaneous Amendment Scotland Regulations 2015. This adapts the framework arrangements in existing regulations to accommodate changes to criminal proceedings in the Sheriff Appeal Court, all Scotland Sheriff Courts, and for specified civil proceedings and judicial review. Members will recall that last month the committee rejected my majority and affirmative instrument making provision in broadly the same area as this negative instrument. <coughs> the government responded by withdrawing that affirmative instrument and laying this one in its place. This instrument does not require a solicitor to seek prior approval from the Scottish Legal Aid Board before instructing counsel for cases in the new court. It also makes provision for solicitor advocates to be paid counsel rates for criminal legal aid work in the Sheriff Court. The DPLR committee made no comment in relation to the drafting of this instrument but has drawn our attention to failure to comply with the 28-day rule and the explanation with the Scottish Government for this breach, an explanation which that committee says that it has accepted. Um, where am I going now? Um, do members have any comments in relation to this instrument? Alison, followed by Aline. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's welcome that the Government has responded in this way to the, the, the um, decision that we took in committee. Um, but it is only an interim arrangement. Uh, the Law Society points out quite rightly, I think, that we need to keep our eye on this and we need to move this forward. Um, they point to an interim scheme uh, relating to the police station duty scheme in 2011, which is still an interim scheme and hasn't been resolved. So um, if there is a way for this committee to... Uh, monitor the situation and encourage the government to uh, resolve the situation amicably by within six months, that would be very helpful. And uh, to welcome the fact that the government listened to the majority view of the committee, I think that's welcome. Um, I'm presuming that whatever the final scheme is, that it will have to come back by instrument to us for, for discussion at the time when it's drawn up. Yes, yeah. obviously yeah, it so, changes. Yeah, it changes yes, if yes. there's a final, because as, as uh, Alison was saying, this is an interim scheme, so but welcome at the time. Roderick, it's, you always look anxious, but I mean, no, I no, did no. notice <laughs> you. No, I presume, so, presumably it's the committee in monitoring its own workload could seek uh, a progress report from the government in kind of January yeah. or February to see how we're doing. And indeed, according to the letter from the um, legal aid, whom I'm looking at from, Law Society is that, in fact, they're going to report to us on the discussions early in the new year. So we've got the two tranches. We've got the yeah. uh, uh, Law Society and we'll also be able to monitor it from the government. OK? Thank you very much. Right, we now move into private session as we've agreed. So I'll suspend for a couple of minutes to allow the gallery to clear, please.